everyone, thank you so much for joining this session on what's new in .NET Desktop. My name is Olya Gavrish. I am a senior program manager here at Microsoft working on .NET team. And currently I'm focusing on desktop solutions. So I'm in charge of WPF, MinForms, porting desktop applications to the latest framework and so on. If you have any questions or feedback after this session, please feel free to reach out to me on Twitter at Olya Gavrish. I'll be happy to answer all your questions. And today we are going to talk about news in desktop world. So first we will cover new.net, .NET 5 and .NET 6. Then I'll talk about new features available in WinForms and WPF. And in the end, I'll briefly share what are new offerings in desktop world, such as cross-platform uh, solution called .NET MAUI and hybrid web desktop uh, platform called Blazor Desktop. All right, let's get started. So what is .NET 5? Before, there were many different .NETs, .NET Framework, .NET Core, .NET Standard, Monozamarin, and we wanted to simplify the choices for developers and provide a single stack that supports the best of breed solutions for all modern workloads and operating systems. We've taken the best of all the existing platforms into a platform called .NET, and it starts with version 5, to emphasize that that is the latest .NET, the highest number among existing .NET Framework 4.8, .NET Core 3.1, and so on. So .NET 5 is the platform of .NET going forward, meaning that all new changes and improvements will be done in .NET 5 and future versions .NET 6, .NET 7, and so on. And besides being the platform, .NET 5 is much better than .NET Framework in many aspects, such as deployment options, performance, and many others. In the scope of this talk, let's see why .NET 5 is a great choice for client apps. If you're building application on .NET 5, you'll get new Visual Studio tooling features, which will make your development more productive. I'll show you those improvements later in this session. Also, the apps can get all the benefits of .NET 5, like self-contained single file exes that don't need .NET Framework on the machine. So you decide when you want to update, not the Windows OS. You have flexibility in the deployment. You can have multiple versions of .NET on the same machine. Of course, all new C-sharp updates will be available exclusively for .NET 5 and future versions 6, 7, and so on. There are new modern Windows 10 controls like WebView 2, which is a new browser control based on Microsoft Edge Chromium, ClickOnce and VB support now available in .NET 5. We've heard your feedback loud and clear that you love those solutions and you want to see them in the future, so we added it. .NET 5. And uh, my probably most favorite feature of .NET 5 is improved performance. Let me show you on this screen shot. I have two applications and that is exactly the same app, but on the left it is targeting .NET Framework and on the right it targets .NET 5. So doing exactly the same task, .NET Framework took 400, let me, uh, 446 milliseconds and .NET 5 only 112 milliseconds. So that is the performance gain you're getting by just simply retargeting your application. No changes needed. That's what you get for free. Now let's talk about future .NET, which is .NET 6. So we switched to a different cadence of releases. Now we're gonna release every year and every other year we will have a long-term support version or LTS for short. And .NET 6 will be LTS version, meaning that we will provide support for it for the six years. Uh, the main features of .NET 6 is C Sharp 10 and C Sharp 10 has a lot of simplifications and 
it improves the way you write code by eliminating overhead and boilerplate. In other sessions, my coworkers will share this amazing new way of writing code, which I personally absolutely love. You'll be able to build cross-platform native mobile and desktop apps with a single code base with .NET MAUI. I'll show you, I'll talk briefly about this offering later in this session. Blazor is expanding to support native devices capabilities, practically important for desktop scenarios, and we'll talk about that as well at the end of this session. And .NET 6 will support single file deployment for Windows apps, we have productivity enhancements like Hot Reload, which I will also share in this session, and of course, more performance improvements in the runtime. With that, uh, if you got interested in .NET 5, .NET 6, you're probably wondering how do I move my application to .NET 5 or .NET 6? Well, let me show you how. And first, let's let me bring my Visual Studio here. So if your application is targeting .NET Core, so if you created it with .NET Core or if you already migrated it from framework to core, your migration will be extremely easy. Here, in I, I did right-click properties. By the way, did, did you notice you see the new layout here? The reason why, because uh, I'm using updated project UI and if you like it, awesome. If you don't like it, you can go ahead in tools, options, environment, preview features. Just undo, unclick this, let me go up, uncheck enable update project properties UI and you will get back to how things were before. And please give us feedback if you like it, if you don't like it, tell us what, why, how do you want it to be. We really encourage you to give us feedback, that way we know what exactly we should build for you. So here, you target framework, we have .NET Core 3.1, right? Well, I am going to choose .NET 5, save it, and that's it. I just migrated my application to .NET 5. I can run it, it will work exactly the same, so you won't notice any differences, but you will get better performance and new features, new controls, whatever is there, new for you, you will automatically get that. Okay, now what if your application is targeting .NET Framework, not .NET Core? Well, .NET Framework is very different from Core and 5, and in order to port your application to .NET 5, there are a lot of changes that have to happen. Luckily, we have a tool for that, that will make all those changes for you. This tool is called Upgrade Assistant. So I'll show how I'm gonna port my application with Upgrade Assistant, but let me choose a different project. Okay, I have a Baby Smash application. Baby Smash is a app written by Scott Hanselman. You might have seen this application. This app teaches babies how to type on the keyboard. Every time I press a button, the letter appears, it is narrated. I also have very cute shapes here. There you go. And as you can see, this app right now is... <laughs> this app is targeting .NET Framework 4.8. All right, let's go ahead and port this app to .NET 5. For that, I already have Upgrade Assistant on my uh, machine, but it's a global tool. It's very easy to install it. And later I'll share the link to the documentation that describes how to get this tool on your machine, how to run it, how to use it, what it does and so on. So I installed this tool on my machine and right now I'm gonna type Upgrade Assistant and provide the path to my solution and click Enter. Right now the tool is analyzing what has to happen to migrate my app to .NET 5 and it gives me step-by-step -step instructions. So 
I have seven steps to perform and actually tool will perform it for me with my supervision and few choices on my side. The first one, backup project, which always is a good idea, but today, right now, I'm gonna choose three, skip the step because I wanna some, save some time. All right, three. Now, next step, convert project file to SDK style. I already have my project file as SDK style project file, so it's already completed. If you don't, uh, the tool will ask you to proceed with this step. Next one is update TFMs, and I'm gonna choose one, apply next step, and it updates target framework from .NET Framework to .NET 5 right now. All right, while it does that, let's look at the next step. Then we will have update NuGet packages. And that is a great feature because if I'm using NuGet packages, okay, four, let me choose it. If I'm using NuGet packages that are old or obsolete or they don't support .NET 5, the tool will update them to the version that supports .NET 5. Great. Now we're gonna migrate, migrate app config files and specifically disable unsupported configuration sections. I'm gonna choose one again. And what's happening? My application was using system diagnostic and it is not supported in .NET 5. So for now it will be disabled. It is disabling all configurations that are not supported in .NET 5. And once it is done, the next step would be, actually, I think we are done. All right, let's go here. And here in dependencies, I see one warning. I know that this NuGet package is no longer needed in .NET 5, so I just removed it. After that, let's build and run the application. All right, it works and right now it targets .NET 5.0, that's .NET, .NET 5. Perfect, so that, that was me porting application from .NET Framework to .NET 5. I was very lucky and Upgrade Assistant did all the work for me. You can find Upgrade Assistant at aka.ms slash .NET Upgrade Assistant and it will help you to reduce time and difficulty modernizing older code bases. It will guide you. You saw step-by-step -step experience where you make choices only where it's needed, but everything else is done for you. It works with multiple project types and it will update many projects if your solution contains more than one. It will do everything. So check it out. And now is a great time to start porting your applications. If you port them right now to .NET 5, in November, it will be extremely easy to update it to .NET 6. We are not anticipating any breaking changes and switching to .NET 6 would be just changing the version in combo box, like I showed you from core to five. With that, let's talk about what is new in WinForms so many things first of all we improved performance and reliability and for that let me show you the results of it i again have same application first runs on dotnet framework 4.8 then dotnet core 3.1 and then dotnet 5. this application just redraws data grid view 50 times and for that it needed 182 kilobyte allocations. Okay, let's do it on .NET Core. And while the application runs, I'll tell you that when we were moving the uh, WinForms from .NET Framework to .NET Core, our task was primarily to make it open source, make it run on Core. We didn't do any improvements. But after that, we were able to innovate in WinForms and we were able to make changes in .NET 5. So from .NET Core to .NET 5, we made significant perf improvements. Uh, there is an article available on .NET blog post that walks you through what exactly we changed, 
but you can see the result. Same amount of iteration here, only 57 kilobytes compared to 173 and 182. So that is the performance gain you get by simply changing from .NET Framework or .NET Core to .NET 5. Let's test it with another option. This one, instead of just one data grid view, has multiple different controls and it's redrawing it 400 times. So here on the framework, we had 100 allocations. This is .NET Core and 78 allocations, which is much better, kilobyte, of course. And now .NET 5, let's see only 18 kilobyte 18 compared to 78 and to 100 so it's more than five times better from dotnet 5 and dotnet frame framework and you can play this application is also available so you can play with that it, we have a link to it on the blog post where we talk about performance improvements in binform so check it out let us know what you think let us know what other areas we should be improving in binforms. We appreciate the feedback from you. All right, moving on to the next news, and that is application-wide default font configuration. So before the default font, Windows font many years ago was Microsoft Sans Serif. Windows Vista had received a fair share of UI updates, including the default font, which then became Sequoia UI. And we were not able to implement the change right away because we were targeting .NET Framework and uh, regression issues is a very high risk there. Once we ported to core, we were able to in innovate in WinForms area and we updated this font to be Sequoia UI. So new font is the same as the default font for Windows, Sequoia UI, but if you created your applications many years ago and it was created with the thought that Microsoft sends Serif, the old default font, was the font of your application and you created the pixel perfect UI, right now you, your UI might not be so pixel perfect. So if you want to go back to that font, now it's very easy. We uh, created an API where you can just in your main method called application.setDefaultFont and specify the font you want. And that change would be available for, it would take effect to all fonts, all windows, all controls, everything in your application too. So you play, change it only once and it takes effect all over your solution. Next one, Visual Basic support. Visual Basic community was very loud making sure we know that they want to be able to port to .NET 5 and future versions of .NET. And now it is possible. Visual Basic is supported in .NET 5 and will be supported in the next .NETs. We have new and updated controls. Also click once deployment. We've heard that many of you depend on this method and love using it. So click once is now available in .NET Core, .NET 5. We have modern browser control that I mentioned earlier, WebView 2. We have accessibility improvements. Accessibility becomes extremely important and we are making sure that all WinForms controls uh, correspond to the highest level of accessibility requirements. And of course, we are working on our SDK for third-party control vendors. So if you're using control vendors such as Teleric, Grip City, DevExpress, Infragistic, they all are now making their libraries available on latest .NETs as well, .NET 5, .NET 6, and most of them already are. So it's probably now a good time to start porting your applications. And if not, if something from control vendors is not yet available, it is coming very soon. We are in constant communication with all control vendors. Also, if you are a control vendor, a smaller control vendor, and I didn't have a chance to work with you yet, but you would like some help from my side, please reach out to me. I'm happy to 
give you extra information, documentation, whatever you need to unblock you, importing your libraries to .NET 5 and so on. All right, let's open Visual Studio and see what new updates and WinForms are there for us. For WinForms, I want to show you this application that is a favorite app of my boss's boss's boss, Scott Hunter. It is called Guhuha. This application is about three Scots. So let me bring this app here. It allows you to choose your Scott because we have Scott Hunter, Scott Hanselman, and Scott Guthrie. And what is amazing about this application that this control is a Telerik combo box. So I can search, I can actually, let me start typing. All right. Yeah, allows me to. Perfect. So, Teleric control is already there. I can work with it in the designer. It is in the toolbox. I can drag and drop it, resize, set all properties. Everything is already in place. The next thing, if you notice, when I choose a different Scott, this part immediately gets updated to their Twitter account. How do I do it? I'm using the new control called WebView2. So that control allows you to host web content in your WinForms or WPF application. So if I want any web capabilities, any web features in my desktop app, right now I can do it with WebView2. And the last thing that I wanted to show you in WinForms is the new task dialog. This task dialog, this feature was implemented entirely by our open source contributor, Konstantin Pryder. Uh, APIs for new task dialog were available in Windows, but we never brought it to WinForms because, again, we were targeting .NET Framework, making changes was very hard. And once we moved to core, Konstantin suggested to provide a wrapper in WinForms and enable all the customizable task dialogues. And right now it is there. You can create your very custom dialogues. You can choose lots and lots of controls here, options and so on. So for example, here I have a link buttons. Are you sure you want to add another Scott? I guess not. Oh, I guess let's risk it. Not so sure. Take me out of this trouble. So on. I have a footer. I have extend expandable panel. Shows the wisdom of the day. Maybe three Scots is just perfect amount of Scots. Maybe. Okay, I'm going to close it. But this task dialog allows you to implement all your creative ideas and customize the dialogue to your taste and specific needs of your applications. It can have multiple pages and it can have controls, checkboxes, progress bars, anything you want can be there. Okay, let's move back to our presentation and now we can talk about news in WPF. We also have so many improvements. We have new features, quick actions and sample data that I will show you in a second. Our ever improving XAML hot reload feature that makes it possible for you to update your app UI while the app is running with real data. The new data binding diagnostic experience that makes sure you don't miss binding failures in your application and are able to navigate right to where the errors is located in your XAML. The new and easy to use design time data using the column for XAML designer. This makes it possible for you to quickly mock almost any property without ever having to run your application. You'll see the value in the designer and many more. Let's jump into a demo and see all those XAML features in action. All right, here I have an application with 
broken data bindings. Let me run it. And usually when you have some data binding failures, it might take you some time to notice that, right? It seems like my application works just fine. I can add the person, I can clear people, add people. All right. And before, this was the experience before. The only way how I was able to tell that data binding is broken is looking at output window and search oh there are some exceptions system window data error but it was extremely hard first it's not obvious that something is wrong right the app is working second just looking through all those lines and lines of code and fishing out the line that you need was extremely inconvenient right now we have a data binding failures dialog and the first indicator you can see that something is wrong with my data binding is by looking at this red uh, circle with a cross and it will show me how many data bindings I have. Now when I click on it, it will open a data binding dialog failure here with all my data bindings. So it has code, count, let me show data, context, binding pass, target, description, everything. You can search for it. Let me, oh yeah, I was searching before for color. Let's see if I have any issues with color. Yeah, there you go. These are my issues related to color. I can combine duplicates and this way it will collapse all the same errors and show me only the different ones. I can filter this. I can sort it, rearrange it. Also, that is a classic Visual Studio window. It means I can move it, I can dock anywhere I want, and so on. So this is a data binding failure dialog, which I hopefully will make your data binding debug way more productive. Now the next feature I wanted to show you is a hot reload. And here I already, if you notice, I put my application here to have it topmost. But if I change anything, let's say I want to add another button. First I have this convenient button, select element. I'm going to click on that and it immediately will take me to where this code is in my XAML file. So this in-app toolbar, we also upgraded that. We made it shorter because we've heard feedback that you didn't like it was too tall. Now it's shorter. You can also make it smaller and even more smaller. And if you don't like it at all, you can unselect it in this settings and this toolbar will never bug you ever again. But it has a lot of convenient features. I absolutely love using it. This way you can go to live visual tree and see the structure of my application. And here's this button. Uh, there are many other display layout adorners and so on. Data binding that I mentioned before. So, okay, let's start editing. Let me go to this button here. And let's say I want to add another button. There you go. I'll call it edit people. I don't know. Did you notice it immediately appeared here? All my changes are immediately reflected here. So I don't need to stop and rerun it. I just modifying XAML and all my changes are visible. All my changes immediately take effect. I want to show you even more. I'm going to take the entire grid and cut it out. Bam! Everything is gone. Now I'm doing Control Z. Everything is back and you can see everything automatically, all data binding, everything is back and works. So that is hot reload. The last thing I want to show you today is quick actions feature. So when a control is selected, 
you can see a light bulb here right this guy and when I click on it it expands a little window with most used properties so now say I want to change the name of it I can go ahead and change it right here I don't need to go uh, find it in XAML I don't need to find it in many many properties in our property windows all the most commonly used properties for this specific control from control to control they're different for button it's one set of properties for list box it would be a different one but they are all here i can change it immediately very fast now let me select let me add say edit no, or list view how about this list view okay i'm gonna add this to you here open quick actions this is the next feature show sample data what this feature will do it will populate my control in the design time with some test data or demo data i clicked it and i have sample item one two three four five when you're using data binding you cannot see data populated in the design time you have to run your application for that and sometimes it's not convenient to constantly run and stop switch between visual studio and the running app also if your data binding is not ready yet or if your database is not ready or any any part of this development process that gets the data to your application is not yet in place you won't be able to see controls populated with data and that's why this sample data is very handy you can right away see how your control looks filled with lines and you can edit font sizes and so on so these all quick actions and sample data are our new features please give us feedback do you like it? Do you hate it? Do you want it something different there in these quick actions? Is this everything you want? Do you want something to be removed? Maybe you want something to be added there. Please ping me on Twitter and tell me what else, what changes you want in those features. We are still collecting users feedback. Perfect. And going back the last topic that I wanted to cover today is .NET desktop platforms, new offerings. The first one is .NET Multi-Platform App UI, or for short, MAUI. We announced MAUI a year ago at Build 2020 and have been releasing preview versions of it. .NET MAUI is the evolution of Xamarin Forms designed to help you deliver high-performance cross-platform nice native desktop and mobile apps all from a single code base. In Preview 4 that was recently released, you can now use Visual Studio to build .NET MAUI apps. .NET MAUI under the hood uses technologies out there today for building native apps on Windows with WinUI, Mac Catalyst for macOS, and of course iOS and Android. .NET MAUI abstracts all those frameworks into a single framework built on .NET 6. You can build apps for any device from a single code base and project system. Instead of learning different stacks and languages for each, you can use one language, one set of libraries, and one UI stack for all of them. And that includes desktop and mobile operating systems, Windows, Mac OS, iOS, and Android. It will release as part of .NET 6 in November, as I mentioned, and you can watch the progress and help contribute on GitHub already. Uh, it is at github slash .NET slash MAUI. The next offering in desktop world is Blazor Desktop. And Blazor Desktop enables building client-side web UIs with .NET but sometimes you need more than what the web platform can offer, right? Sometimes you need full access to native capabilities of the device. 
you can now host Blazor component in .NET MAUI apps to build cross-platform native app using web UI. The components run natively in the .NET process and render web UI to an embedded web view control using a local interrupt channel. And that is the same control I just show you web view two that was in my WinForms demo. This hybrid approach gives you the best of native and web. Your components can access native functionality through the .NET platform and they render standard web UI. So .NET MAUI Blazor apps can run anywhere .NET MAUI can. Windows, Mac OS, iOS, and Android. And currently, our primary focus for .NET 6 is on desktop scenarios. So that's Windows and Mac OS. That is it for this talk. So port your application to .NET 5 with Upgrade Assistant. You can find it at the following link and check out new XAML tooling, check out WinForms improvements, new cross-platform .NET MAUI and web desktop, Blazor desktop. And please give us feedback. We really value your uh, thoughts your, when you create issues, when you help us to develop code in the open, in our open source repositories. I want to thank you for all the contribution you've already made. And if you have any questions, please reach out to me on Twitter. I'll be happy to chat with you. With that, enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you so much for your time and attention. Have a great day. Bye.